evening. So we thank the Lord for today and we give him praise for this evening's class. And we want to thank the Lord for all those in the 2022-23 master class. Well done. We are getting there one day after the other. We are moving on. So we started in the morning to do the introductory aspect of the life of Judas. And this evening we want to pick out some more things, a little bit more into details to those headings we looked at in the morning. So we are going to pray now and go in straight into the lesson of today. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We honor you, Lord, for you are faithful, ever faithful. Thank you for looking after us. Thank you for allowing everything about Judas to be written so that we can learn our lessons and then, um, Lord, redress our steps. Thank you, Father. We pray you speak to us. Lord, take away any veil of religion or what we've known in the past or had in the past so that no one will say, oh, I've had it in the past. What are they saying? But Lord, give us a teachable heart. Make our hearts ready to receive what you have for us tonight. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. So in the morning, we looked at the introductory aspect and we looked at the headings. Now let's just give these headings some explanations and then keeping ourselves straight to the thing the Bible has written. I, as I said in the morning, when you mentioned Judas, everybody is aware, at least almost all the Christians, even the little children who are born again, they know people out there like so many places um, to be called a Judas has gone into our day-to-day -day language it has gone into our day-to-day -day phrases and usage that when you mention Judas even those who have not known the Bible or don't have never owned one or opened know what you mean so that's how popular the name Judas is you don't even have to say Judas is carried and then as we said in the morning I have not had anyone you know who whose name is Judas or who calls who had called their children Judas no not at all so let's go in straight to look at number one we said in the morning one thing there is that Judas was one of the disciples mm, one of the disciples in Matthew chapter 10 verse 4 and Judas the brother of James and Judas Iscariot which also was the traitor this his name among the last so he was also one of the 12 that were ordained that were ordained you know sometimes everyone just keeps saying oh the traitor oh um, Judas who betrayed Jesus but we've not really given attention to know that he was among those who were called Judas was called and not just being called Judas was ordained hmm. he was one of those who were ordained so um, when we are looking out for Judas please stop the mistake of looking for Judas out there or in the pew look for Judas on the pulpit that's where so he's there it means that you know Judas went out with them to preach so Pete Judas was an evangelist Judas was a teacher he was a preacher he was when Jesus asked them to get the people to sit down so that they can distribute the meals they took the meal when they got them sat down the disciples served the people the food and make sure they were all eating which means Judas was a pastor was being trained to be a pastor and then um, remember they were 12 disciples which later became an apostle though he missed it in Mark chapter 3 verse 19 to 22 the Bible says and Judas Iscariot which also betrayed him and they went into an house and the multitude come together again so that they could not so much 
as eat bread. And when his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him. For they said, He is beside himself. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He had Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devils casted he out devils. To and Judas Iscariot, which also betrayed him, and they went. These were the names of the apostles, and then Judas was one. So he saw the in all oh, the work, he was part of it, the ministry, how intense it was, all that Jesus did. He persevered with orders. So, brethren, you can see from here that Yeshua called and ordained them to cast out devils so judas was among those who cast the devils out he was among those who came back rejoicing that satan was made subject to them that was it him so um but and he was among them everything everything said about jesus and we'll come to that later to look at what made um, Judas to betray his master. We can take our bearing from this scripture. But let's continue. He played along with others. Hey, Judas played along with others. He did. So he was among those Satan was made. There was nothing to tell others that Judas was not part of them. Nothing on his face showed it. Everything everybody did, he did. He, They were there. He was there. He was ordained. All the meetings, he was at all the meetings. All the instructions, he obeyed. Everything, he played along. Judas was very quiet. He wasn't like the mouthy, talkative Peter who will be too quick to say things. No. He was quiet brother. So he played along with others. Watch at church when brethren play along with others. Prayers, they are there. Meetings, they are there. They do not fail. Um, leadership meeting, they are there. Um, Deacon meeting, they are there. When you're going out for missions, they will be part of those who will contribute or do this. But check, there are Judas. And I'm going to explain they're there and then someone might ask me Judas on the pulpit quite a lot who betrayed their master and you said ah, they, how can he how can a pastor be a Judas yes so many things we do today betrays our master when you're preaching the wrong doctrine you're in the pseudo kingdom gospel you're betraying the master because not not what he said and that's not why he came for <clears throat> if you're there extorting money in ministry you went into ministry because of your belly what you can get what you can eat so everything you're doing you know you are judas betraying the master because people out there will see your practices and the things you're doing and then they will speak evil of the gospel when you are in the gospel and you are using other powers, juju power, sangoma power, um, demonic power, witchcraft, you can just keep naming them. You go back to them to get your power so that when you come in, into the church, you can do miracles. Crusades, you can do miracles. You're betraying Jesus. When you are in ministry like Judas and you're a thief, you're a thief, you, you do to the church fund anything you like, it belongs to you, Judas. When you are in ministry and the people who are vulnerable and submit themselves to you, single mum, single man, if you're a woman and you lure them into adultery and fornication, you are what? Uh, okay, let me be nice. You'll be so named. We'll add your name and then put Judas. When you defile children at church, parents trusted you with those children 
but you're defiling them at the Sunday school class. You're betraying Jesus. So your middle name would be what? Judas. When you are there filled in the church, speaking all sorts, and your mind is not there, you are Judas. If you prophesy falsely, you're betraying the master. So your first name will be Judas. So whether you choose to be the name first or middle name or soul name, whatever, when you are not careful, what you do in ministry, you live in a house, and your life had become a ridicule, you've discouraged brethren. You sway them off to evil. The person is acting out Judas. So what, let's watch ourselves as ministers and those in the classroom who are coming in to be trained to go out there to do for the Lord. There's something we all need to watch out. So as you're flipping through the televisions and you're picking up all sorts of things and then in and watching and following them. You know out there, a lot of people write things, oh, I'm doing um, um, orphanages, we're doing all their asking is with money, 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 not spreading the gospel. You don't see anything again about being born again and salvation. It's all about what to get through this. Watch those people who flock your page with all sorts of, give me this, give me this, give me that, give me, we're doing this, we're doing that, look at this and look at that. And we're feeding these and that's all. Don't mind them. They are not. Should have played along with others. He got ordained. He had the collar. He was made an overseer. He would have been an overseer. He can play out anywhere. But one thing, even if you didn't go away with anything today, you know it that religion had made us to look at the pew and people out there as Judas. And we forgot that Judas was one of those who were ordained. So no wonder we see all sorts on our pulpits today in different places disgracing the name of our Lord Yeshua bringing down the reputation of our scriptures and then our faith because they decided to play along like Judas. What else can we learn about Judas? When you decide to play, you'll be remembered by what you have done. Then you know that song of Horatius? Bona, fading away like the stars of the morning. Fading away. We will all fade away. But what will happen? Only remembered by what we have done. Thus would we pass from the earth and its toiling, only remembered by what we have done. He was remembered by what he did. Judas Iscariot the traitor. Judas Iscariot the who betrayed, just like Jeroboam. Jeroboam who made Israel to sin. So while you're relaxed and you feel things can go and you carry on doing things that are not right, remember, remember, it will stay with you. Just like um, the literature we read when we were in secondary school, say the evil that men still lives after them. It lived after him. So don't let anyone tell you it doesn't matter, it ends here on F. Because with all these um, false things we go into and the pseudo preachings they tell you oh it ends here get all you can get here on earth and then oh, enjoying so people are looking at the enjoyment for the moment they're not looking at tomorrow why because they think once we're dead is gone no judas iscariot is dead but this has followed him so let's be very careful and jesus knew him very well Jesus knew because the Bible says he knew all men in John chapter 2 verse 24 and 25 and that's why he didn't commit himself to any man for he knew all men so know it that anything any game you're playing at church Jesus knows it takes dislike and disregard 
to betray someone when we uh, we just read the book of mark chapter 3 when they said oh he was beside himself um one second let's get there uh, yes mark chapter 3 verse 19 and 20 so they said all sorts all that disciples had so what latched on on his mind oh um, yeah this carpenter's son where is he coming from this one has nothing so i don't think i want to continue you know some people when they join a ministry especially if the ministry is newly planted and then it's still the time of tilling you know inviting people and all those things they don't want anything they have thing to themselves oh we've been in this church for three years nothing is still happening the community is not coming we are not winning all the rich people we don't have this we don't know oh everything we have is being sown into this church oh now we have to start the church building oh we have to do this they come and they will lose hope and before you know it they jump out judas may have seen all the things they said about jesus and his mind went oh i thought i'm coming to a rich man no wonder he was stealing from the purse oh i thought i was coming to um, a champion like david who would deliver the children of israel from the romans oh no i made a mistake wow so that must have gone into your mind so those of us who go to church and we look down on those who are ministering to us we look down on the walk we look down and when we look at them you know based on our own perspective what our expectations what we expect and how we want it and if it is not that way you look down on that work we've seen that a lot they look down on the walk there's no respect when you call them on meeting they won't even come they'll just give you a flimsy excuse and in their mind is what am i going there to do when the three people i prefer to go where they are ten thousand a lot of people are in ministries today not because the lord had called them in that ministry it's because they are following the crowd so what else can we see about judas iscariot he was the only one with an office. Wow. The only one with an office. He was the treasurer of the team. He had the purse. But unfortunately, he was stealing from the purse. You know, the children and I some years ago went to a castle. To not really a castle. It was an old palace. But it's now one of the places that you can go to. It's one of the heritages it has a very interesting um history so he was the exchequer of the king and then he built he wanted to build what will look like buckingham palace so he carried on the orderly end um castle palace it's all there is history you just search it out you say it and he built this magnificent big large and then gave it to, to the king as um a gift wow how did you get the money how did you build this where did it come from what it was then they checked and found that he was taking money from the treasury to build <laughs> that place how many people are that way the only person with an office most people out there God has taken you up up to the you know in our times today probably a big pastor a big minister known across the world what are you doing in the secret the only one others remained and then he misused the opportunity don't misuse an opportunity. Don't misuse what Jesus had given to you. But that's not okay. So he just carried on with others. And my prayer is that time we'll take our, we'll be very careful on that. What else we learn from him? He latched on to hypocrisy and dishonesty. He held it so strongly. He didn't allow the word to break through him. 
others carried on with what the baggages they came with but as Jesus was talking to them they were letting go and allowing it to go Peter and um, Peter was rebuked so many times James and his brother um, John were called the Barnages they carried on they were all so rebuked of the ambition but let's see what the Bible says in John 12, 1 to 8. Then Jesus, then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spark night, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet and her hair with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then said one of the disciples, Judas is carried. Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for three hundred pence? and giving to the poor this he said not that he cared for the poor but because he was a thief and had a bag and bare what was put therein then said jesus let her alone against the day of my bearing had she kept these for the poor always you have with you but me you have not always very interesting how hypocrisy plays out. This kind of brethren show up in the welfare of pastors and brethren. They do. Mary came with a heart of gratitude because many was forgiven. Many was forgiven. Look, her brother is alive. So what is it, what is it that I keep back from Yeshua? Nothing. My lifetime, my money, whatsoever. You know, I said to people, giving is not as a function of what you have. And a lot of people think because you're giving, you've got it. No, it's a function of the heart. Amen. I'm saved. I'm alive. Wow. And the testimonies of my life, I, if I sit down to start talking about them, then we wouldn't finish today. So what else? What will I give to the Lord? Nothing but ingratitude. The only thing she had, which is nothing. Spark night oil in a book. What is what's that? Compared to the wealthies of the, those who are wealthy today, that's almost like nothing. But that was what she had so precious. And she's giving back. Giving back. And look at the heart that is soiled the heart that is not right she broke her position for life are there not some brethren who have given their life dedicated to the church committed in the things they do and some brethren will come to discourage them they are doing it it is nothing to them when they donate to church it is nothing to them when they give it is nothing with all their heart but then the kind of Judas will make some comment about what they are doing. When Mary poured out her heart are precious, instead of, wow, look at this sister and copying her example, what did he do? He went out. He opened his mouth and said things that he ought not to say, unfortunately. The other came out and it was so beautiful. What an excellent smell because it was expensive. Some brethren would say, oh, you mean you want to donate your car to the church? What? Oh, you mean you're giving the church all this money? Nah. Oh, you mean you're giving the church all this time? So what time do you have for yourself? What time do you have for your holiday? What time do you have for this? What time do you have for that? They say all oh, sorts. They will notice very quickly. They will try to model up the bad waters around you, trying to take you out from being part. They'll pull you down if you're trying to, you know, do the things of the Lord. Mark them because they are up for something which we're going to see much later. Don't let the Judas Iscariot take you off. 
another thing we'll see about him is he had a corrupting influence he had a corrupting influence so what happened during that time oh this should have been given to the poor he murmured so when he murmured and then um, he said why should we give the pastor why should we give him this oh brethren just put money in an envelope whether it's 20 pounds or 10 or 1 pound just throw it he said, oh what did we get 70 pounds oh wow that's okay give it to him yet on Sunday you come to church and sit down yet you call him to pray for you Yet he has left what he's doing and he's ministering to everyone one after the other, pouring out life. But just that one pound oil, spark night, that smelled so lovely, you refused it. You refused it. My husband and I have witness where we went to see a pastor. I went to see him. So when I got there, wow, I couldn't believe that he was living in such a place. I couldn't believe. I came back and I said to my husband, I went into this place and I asked of this man and they took me to where he was living. I couldn't believe it. He says, where? I said, look, he lived in this place and look at what it looked like. This is what he says, what? I said, yes. So that day we heard that they are having a, their pastor's meeting and their leadership meeting. We invited ourselves to that meeting and we came and we sat with them. Brethren, you need to hear what was going on in that meeting. Do you know that the leadership of that church were struggling over what to give to their pastor. Someone says, no, oh, we can't give him that. That is too much. The other one says, but there's nothing in the offering to do. The other one says, oh, why can't we just give him? That should be enough. This is their full-time pastor. Full-time. The growth of the church, him. Evangelism, the prayers, he's there. Fridays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursday morning, everything. And he left his job. It wasn't like he was idle. He left well-befitting job because the ministry was just growing and the orders were working. So he took on, on himself all these and contented himself with living in only two rooms. Two rooms with three children and that was it and we listened to them I, I'm just glad uh, you weren't there it was a sad meeting you could see the hardness of people's heart you could see Judas Iscariot playing out where they were discussing what to give to him it was then my husband says men and brethren what's going on here what is going on do you know the spirit in this meeting is the spirit of judas iscariot anyway the end of that meeting they decided to get him a car but one of the worst cars the worst of volvo cars that is just good for scrapping and when it came we saw the car. My husband said, no way will you give him this car. He wouldn't even get into it. Meanwhile, the poor pastor was so happy. He couldn't even, because he treks all over the whole city with his legs. <laughs> so seeing that rickety car meant a lot. Says, no, go and get him another car. Go and get him. He's laboring, blessing all of you, standing in there. Why play Judas Iscariot? And most people are playing Judas Iscariot today. When you keep back and you don't look after those God has given to you, the missionaries out there, the work of the Lord out there, you are keeping back. You are playing Judas Iscariot. Probably when you drop in your one penny, you say, that's okay. Um, pastors should be poor church rats. That should do them. And they have their children. I know one. I walked with some years ago living in a thatched house with three children and the wife was pregnant for the four. I didn't know what to do. It was a village church. 
so I will go into their house to help them in the farm and they help them to use clay on there it was almost like crying I wished I had all I could to give to them yet these pastors are fervent both of them so dedicated I mean angels in human body wonderful brother let's open our eyes don't play Judas with their church or to your pastor or to anybody do not play Judas at all and Jesus said to her why trouble you the woman because he poured it bad influence let's see um, Matthew 26 7 to 13 there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head and he sat at meat but when his disciples saw it they had indignation saying to what purpose is this waste for this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor when jesus understood it he said to them what happened the disciples hear why someone raised it judas iscariot negative influence in the church brethren let's be careful when people make suggestions that look okay when people says oh can we do this that should do and it breaks your heart and you said no this ought not to be so i can't give my god anything that didn't cost me anything the judas will be talking his influence was terrible. He influenced others. When they heard him talk about, oh, it shouldn't be, they all also joined and say, yeah, 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 it's true, it shouldn't be. So what are you conceding to at church? Or even out there? Yes, you may think that brother was is still with us. No, that sister is still with us. No, they're Judas at church. The disciples didn't know the motive of Judas. They had a simple heart. They just repeated what he said. But they didn't know there was something else about him. If they had known, which they knew much later, he wouldn't have roped them in into the sin. And what is the sin they did? Their own master, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, that took them, training them, showing them salvation and the way of life, just what to give to Jesus was too much for them. Wow, that's ingratitude. But it came through someone who could talk. So please, this saga is almost everywhere at churches. Oh, why are we on evangelism every Saturday? Can we do once in a month? We have other things we're doing. Others we say, yeah, 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 yeah. It's true, it's true. We've got children. We need to do this. We've got to relax. We've got to do this. Yeah, can we do it once in a month? And you all agreed. She is suggesting, he is suggesting once in a month because he has no time for Jesus. So don't follow that Judas. You don't know why. He doesn't want to be the only person who wouldn't come out. So he wants to take the rest of the team of the house let's look out for them and make sure we don't give them room and i can continue giving such um examples when it comes to pastors don't bother yourself god will look after them god will look after them because it's a sure promise David says, from the time I'm young to now I'm old, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his children begging bread. Somehow the Lord will send them to the right, we send a raven to them. Somehow the Lord will take them to the widow to be fed throughout the time of famine. I tell you, believe me, I'm talking about what I know. God is very faithful, even in very little even in very little he will turn your five loaves and two fishes to what to feed four thousand men he will multiply it so much in abundance you only little you eat will be okay will be fine anyway let's carry on he sought to kill his he sought to kill for gentle rebuke 
he sought to kill just for gentle rebuke in Matthew 26 14 and 13 to 16 Jesus said to them in verse 13 you have the poor always but me you don't have just a gentle rebuke to all the team members what happened that's all he got angry when he was rebuked and sought to betray his master same rebuke given to Peter several times Peter took it graciously they speak evil at every opportunity same rebuke given to everyone Jesus said to uh, Thomas and the Philip in John 14 how long will I not be with you and yet you have known no me yet they carried on but this was a general one have you seen some brethren you know their heart is not right but you're treading on soft grounds with them like on an eggshell so you don't break the because you know any little thing you say they will go they will just scatter the church any little thing you say wow you'll be in trouble so because of them you are just this way no we can't continue that way nobody intimidates the, anyone at church no don't give seat on that room anyone who had come to intimidate means that the person is sent by devil no it ought not to be so look at him verse 14 jesus just saw them he left angrily well certain things were in his mind he was the son of perdition we know that the bible said it was prophesied he said none will be lost jesus said none will be lost except the son of perdition but the challenge here is it wasn't said to um um judas iscariot oh come you are the one it was said to the twelve at least each and every one of them would have been walking towards I'm not going to be these ones that one of you will betray me have I not chosen you one of you is a devil I'm not gonna be this devil no we should come to that point when they were asking is it I is it I is it I we look inward I'm sure that's are saying Lord I know I have some things with me some inconsistencies and all those things but I'm not going to be Mm. but he carried on played the game and moved on he meddled with avarice he meddled with avarice this is the one everybody knows and can talk about it even the children oh avarice and greed killed him um, was what took him away he meddled with avarice in Mark 14, 11, 10 and 11. And Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went unto the chief priest and betrayed, to betray him unto them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought how he might conveniently. Wow. Look at the word. Mark it in your Bible. Conveniently betray him not with struggle not with push and shove but with gentleness with ease betray him have you seen such brethren yes who look for every opportunity to lie in wait every opportunity to lie in wait as you're preaching they're looking for one word you say so that they can catch it out and tell her did you hear that oh they are talking about me they're talking about you oh they don't do this they just and look for an opportunity to matter why were they doing there are things they've not dealt with probably they've not dealt with unforgiving spirits they didn't deal with pride they didn't deal with a particular sin they came into church and they're not happy to let go they didn't deal with it judas didn't deal with greed he came into church as a thief and all the preaching in John chapter 3 except you be born again you cannot enter into the kingdom of God he didn't scratch him not not at all Matthew chapter 5 6 7 didn't scratch him at all he still held on to the old how many people are holding on to the old you had false doctrines you're holding on to you don't want to let go you're there in 
all sorts of things stealing adultery fornication you are telling lies you hold on to lies you don't want to let go you watch certain things that you're so hooked to and doesn't matter any preaching you don't want to let go you are there sitting and cheating in your business it doesn't matter what message is coming you're still cheating and lying over your business you are playing Judas you're playing you're hiding things in your heart at the morning you come to church in the evening you go off to do things probably go to your traditional people go to witchcraft and then the worst are those who come to sing do one thing at church and go back to fornication when it's convenient it's terrible that was the root cause he didn't deal with it he kept taking and because nobody was seeing him he thought he will pass so you keep doing those secret sin and because nobody is seeing or you think nobody has seen you and you carried on it will catch you out i tell you it wouldn't go well in the first place your name is not in the book of life in the second place you've missed it all three you are meddling with danger you're meddling with fire he meddled with it secret sin nobody knew i'm a thief so i can carry on nicking some pounds from the purse i can carry on gossiping at the back i can carry on stabbing at the back i can carry on doing dodgy businesses at the back i can carry on telling lies at the back i can carry on with evil speaking at the back i can carry on with bitterness and unforgiveness i can carry on with syncretism i can carry on with witchcraft because you thought nobody's seeing you it will catch up may the lord help us to learn these lessons not to allow them it caught up with him Indeed, may we cry today and ask the Lord. He got angry, sought opportunity to do what? Sell his master. Unfortunately, some brethren who are unaware of these, follow them, join them, don't follow them. That's not why the Lord had called you. Let's see another thing again. Around him, what did he do? let's go so brethren this is all a lesson for each and every one of us and it's something that we will all learn and then ask the lord and say father please it's not about judas anymore he's gone now it's about me and it's about all of us and what we're doing and how we are because we cannot hear all these things all our life about um judas and everything about him and then we carried on and we might say oh it's all about judas who oh, i'm not judas is not what else took judas money mammon the root of all evil he went to them to ask for money and they gave him some and did it last he didn't what can we get from there he left and died before the person he sold that's a lesson to teach us he left and died before jesus because when he saw that they he had they've taken the money he went and hung himself he committed suicide which is another sin on top of a sin he didn't leave to see the one he sold going to die he died before him another thing we will learn from there is that he left the door of his heart ajar he left it quite open yes his was avarice others are deceit murder greed envy fighting all those little little things he left them and that was why it was easy for satan to enter into him john chapter 13 the bible says and satan entered into judas he didn't just enter 
there was a tilled ground that was fertilized and watered ready so when the seed was planted uh, it grew immediately looking very green so when you leave your heart the door of your heart wide ajar satan will come in and will occupy everywhere that's what he's known for and when he comes to occupy he will kill he will steal your heart kill it and destroy it john 10 10. don't leave yourself open for satan to go in all this wild the secret sin the things he was doing hardened his heart hardened his heart so much that all the preachings and miracles and parables and everything didn't make any sense to him didn't how many brethren are in church today you're listening to me or you've come into the school of ministry you're only here to come and get a certificate and then go but your heart is not with jesus it's not in ministry not at all we are not with you if your backyard is opened what we will see will be terrible no don't leave your close the door so that satan will not have any room to enter he did enter the bible says it's like a roaring lion walk it about seeking whom he may devour don't give him that chance at all it was the money and which he carried on was what betrayed him so let's look at the final few points the covering cast was removed wow the covering cast was removed in john chapter 13 when jesus finished the statement satan entered into judas and he left immediately he left jesus opened his mouth to the actual commissioning i want you to take your time to read the book of um um, um john chapter 14 is very very interesting very interesting let's look at you know very interesting thing here john 11 john 14 and then we can just um say some few things in here very very interesting brethren and then um we can see john chapter 13 turn your bible with me and let's look at um the last few verses so when satan entered into judas and then he left in verse 20 okay and when 21 22 and 26 as soon as he left verse 31 therefore when he was gone out jesus said now is the son of man glorified and god is glorified in him if god be glorified in him god shall also glorify him in himself and shall straightway glorify him little children yet a little while i'm with you you shall seek me and then you shall not find me jesus opened his mouth and started and says a new commandment i give unto you that you love one another as i have loved you that you also love one another and he says whither i go thou canst not follow me now but thou shalt follow me afterwards then let's look at that chapter 14 in my father's house and many mansions if it were not so i would have told you it was there jesus told them i am the way the truth and their life and revealed the power of the holy spirit commissioned them in verse 15 chapter 15 carried on chapter 16 carried on chapter 17 he prayed for them why the covering cast left left amen just like in the book of Isaiah chapter 5 when the year Uzziah died yeah, the heaven opened just like the time of Abraham and Lot when a lot separated it was then the promise that lingered came so brethren sometimes when these Judas leave um, it's for good anyway but those pastors know what I'm talking there are some brethren you can't say certain things when they are there it's only when they are gone that's when you can then talk about some few things you need to tell the church why because um 
that's a covering cast, one who will not get it right. Now, another one is that it took a case to identify Jesus among the twelve. We shouldn't overlook that. He conveniently came and said to them, the one I will give a kiss, betrayed the master with a kiss, and then gave him that kiss. But what do we learn there? Why? Jesus is the main man in the team. They call him master. So it shouldn't have been difficult to identify him among 12 people. It should have been very easy. Why? So that's a lesson for us today. For those of us who carry our titles and who carry our position along the way. The Bible says that Christ thought it not robbery to, to be equal with God but humbled himself. Let humility go. It means Christ wore the same dress as they did, ate with them, slept with them. There was no difference between them and him. So it was difficult to pick him out of the twelve. What do we see today contrary? You don't need anyone to tell you who is the man of the house when you come into the church. It's either he's on a big robe sitting on the throne of the church or he's sitting on a choice chair. And then, so what is the problem mingling with our brethren? I know some years ago, there was a lady that went to a pastor and said to him, oh, you don't do anything with those in your church. Keep them very far. Make sure you don't sit down and talk with them. And then because you're the pastor of the church, oh, keep them afar. They should be low and you should be high. No. John the Baptist says that Christ will increase and we will decrease. So do you carry yourself? We know you. You're this, here they said dress the way you want to be addressed. So when you come in to see the woman of the house, you will know you pick her up in one go because she we she's wearing the latest in town in the church. It's competition. She must look elegant and then exclusively beautiful. Oh, the man must be neatly dressed in a well-tailored suit and slicky shoes. And then these, the chairs are different. Oh, somebody carries their Bible when they get up, when they are coming in. It took Judas to kiss Jesus among 12. When we come into your church of a thousand people, will we know who you are in one go? Immediately. That's the order of the day. May the Lord deliver us. And may we learn examples from Jesus. May we learn. We've preached this Jesus. We've talked about him. But our prayer is that we carry on to be like him. Regret too late. Regret too late. He regretted it. And he went and hung himself. Yeah, you will. Whoever, you will. He then after that, when you are done. But my prayer is that it wouldn't be too late for us. Right now you can repent. Right now you can say, Lord, I'm not going to play Judas again. All the secret things I've lived in. Lord, I'm not going to carry on. Everywhere I've betrayed you in ministry, in my individual life, at church no more. It was late for him when he realized he has betrayed an innocent man. You fought the church just as Ananias came to Peter thinking he was lying to Peter, not knowing he was lying to the Holy Spirit. So brethren, let's be very careful. There will be a regret. You then know that, wow, I had wanted to do this to these people. Little did I know that it wasn't them I had fought. I have fought the Holy Spirit. We can repent. Now, Judas Iscariot is a lesson for us. Evil gain is a waste. He took the money, 30 pieces only. Can you imagine? Whoa! If he had sold him for six billion, we would have been saying, well, he will go to buy one of the islands and live there all by himself and buy a yacht and then buy an airplane, whatever he could get. He sold Jesus for nothing. When you are a betrayal at church, when your brothers who lead others into to sin, who says something and the whole people remember you on the last day the Lord will inquire them of your hand because you led them astray sold for nothing and then uh, it was wasted they used it to buy the potter's field because they too wouldn't get that money 
they wouldn't take it from him. Can you see the irony? They would have taken that better money worth nothing. He said, no, we can't take that money. You go back with your money. So he was part of them and they denied him. Don't be part of evil. Satan will deny you. I've seen a lot of brethren who followed others to commit sin. And at the end of the day, ha, ah, they were all by themselves. Please stand strong. His office let another take. His office let another take. Psalm 109 verse 8. The Bible says, let his days be few and let another take his office. And Acts chapter 120. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein and his bishopric let another take. If you play the Judas, your office will be taken. <laughs> you will go and empty handed. I tell you, Satan has nothing to offer anyone. He's wicked. Extremely wicked. He will take the one you have and replace it with nothing. His office let another take. He thought he was too important. No, Matthias replaced him. If you play that game in the church, just as you're going, the righteous one will come immediately. Your office let up. So let's tell ourselves today, my office no one will take. Satan, you're wasting your time. I've read about Judas and I'm going to take my correction. I'm not going to fall into that trap. No way. My office no one will take. Son of perdition who betrayed Elohim. Yes, yeah, some people ask questions and said, but it was prophesied. God knew it well. So is he not created for that? No. No. It wasn't said to anyone in the beginning. It must be. The Bible said Jesus knows whom he will. Why? He knows whose heart is open, left ajar for Satan to plant all sorts and meddle with. He knew amongst them the one who would not repent. He knew among them who would be playing sacred sin. He knew among them who will be the thief and all the preachings and all the things wouldn't change. There are so many people out there. It doesn't matter what is going on. They are still hardened going on on the false ways. They don't want to change. It doesn't matter what the scripture says. They still keep to the old. They are latching on to that idol. To the idol. When you latch on to nothing, you're playing Judas. Some are latching on to wealth. Some are latching on to fame. Some are latching on to fashion. Some are latching on to so many things that you can't even put your hand into. That's what happened. Jesus knew among them who will latch on and who Satan will enter and have a free way to use, to do it. You can run for your life today. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you today. We bless you. Looking at the life of Judas Iscariot is not an easy thing. No one likes it, but we have to study it, Lord. And it's not about studying such us, O oh Lord. You know our hearts. If see if there's any wicked thing and take them away. We can't just be here as knowing, talking about it is in our slogan, is in our everyday language, and yet we are living like Judas. Help us, Lord. Save us. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen.